recording here. All right. So thank you guys. Welcome for the educational session. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm the owner of Technical Traders. I trade Monday through Friday. Uh, everybody in here for all the new members in the Discord, welcome. I'm super excited to have this session underway, and I'm super excited for this to be open to everyone as well. Again, I want to provide at least some educational sessions here and there for uh, not just VIP members in the Discord, but for everyone to have access to it, because I think a lot of this information is very important for everyone to uh, get access to. So the things we're going to be going over today is we're going to be going over risk management, proper position sizing, how to create a trading plan and how to follow your trading plan, uh, psychology tips, and then we're going to go into a Q&A at the end. So let's just jump right into it. First thing, intro to risk management. Now, this is a big question I want everybody in here to ask themselves, because this is something that before we even jump any further into trading or any, and we talk about any, any, any more, you have to ask yourself, do you want to trade for a day, a week, a month, or for the rest of your life? Because I hear so many people in discord that, you know, if I'm not green today, my life's over, I need to keep trading. Or if I'm, if, if I have one bad week, my life's over or one bad month, you have to totally switch your mindset to a long-term mindset when trading guys. And it has to do with risk management as well. You will never be a successful trader if you're not ready to invest years into this guys. I, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but it's the, it's simply the truth. You ever wonder why the statistic is 99% of traders fail? It's because you have to be willing to put in years of work into this job. Now, one way you can think about it is look at a doctor education, right? Or a master's education. Master takes five years. Doctor takes seven, eight years. That's eight years of education for them to now make maybe 400, 500 grand outside of uh, education once they're actually done with their full education. You cannot expect to be making that kind of money when it's your first, second, maybe even third year in trading, right? You have to think of it like that. Every year is going to be a mark on your education, and you're here to improve every single time and every day that you wake up and you look at the markets. Stop trading like the markets are ending this week. There's always going to be an infinite amount of opportunity in the market. One day does not mean anything in your journey. One week does not mean anything in your journey. It's all about how you look, and it's all about how perspective is when you're actually viewing it. Start thinking more about the process of trading, not just the profits. So now we're going into it. Some things I want to talk about before we get into it as well. Things that are most likely killing your trading account. Number one, over trading. You have no sort of discipline in the markets. You wake up, Right when the market opens, you're automatically itching to put on a trade. You see one little move in one direction, one little move in the in another, and you are just jumping back and forth, you know, fighting yourself to not click the buy or sell button because you have no discipline whatsoever. And then right when that trade goes in your favor, you, let's say you take it off. And then one second later, one minute later, you're like, oh, another trade. Oh, another trade. And then you just keep trading with no significant edge in the market, and you end up just having significant losses throughout the day. And this also goes for even when you're up on the day. Me and me and the VIP members have a rule where if we're 30 minutes into the market and we take two trades and we're up a significant amount, there's no reason for us to stick around any longer for us to overtrade. Because number one, we don't want to give back profits and we do not want to build bad habits. Revenge trading, having the thought that I need to make my money back, right? I need to take, I need to make that from my previous loss, right? Now, the mindset you need to have is every single trade that you take is individual. There's an individuality in the game of trading. Every single opportunity you take will be in, it will be unique to itself. So you cannot be thinking in a money sense where if you lose one trade here, you're automatically thinking to make it back in the next trade. That's a terrible mindset to have because the opportunities that present itself might not present itself in the way you want it to. Meaning if I just take a trade, let's say I lose, you know, $500 and then right after that, I lose that money. I'm automatic. You know, I look at my, my profit and laws. I don't want to have a red day. Cause let's say I'm on a streak. And so I automatically force myself to get into another trade to make back my loss. And that trade that I force myself to get into isn't my edge. It's not my strategy. I'm just entering a random trade, which then ends up being causing me to go more red, which is what happens most, most of the time. Next is tilt, greed, and fear. All of these three wrap into a very similar category, right? Tilt 
is what happens when you take a loss and you just are, you get frustrated with yourself because you're not following your rules. You know, you're not following your rules. So you're like, you take that loss and you're like, why the fuck did I do that? You know, you're like, why did I do that? And that's happened to me so much when I first started trading, I would get so angry with myself because I wouldn't follow my rules. I wouldn't follow my plan. And I'd get angry with myself and I'd continue to just keep throwing money into the market, keep throwing money into the market, and I just keep losing. Same thing with greed. When I get into a trade, let's say my price target's already hit, I'm up a lot. And I've just, you know what? No, I want to keep going. You know, I want to hit a thousand, I want to hit a five hundred dollars on the day. You know, I want to hit four hundred dollars on the day. Instead of taking the trade as an individual trade, I'm thinking about the greed and I want more because I want to hit some kind of price target. You stop thinking about the money aspect of it and thinking about the trade. Does the trade itself allow you for your risk to go that far? Is the trade allowing you for you to maybe give it a little more room for your price target? You have to take all these things into account, not just the money. That is the biggest thing that I want to tell new traders. Stop thinking about the money. Start thinking about the actual trading process. Same thing with fear. This is why a lot of new traders struggle with their trading because they find themselves taking massive losses in very small wins. And fear kicks in when that trade goes against you and you have no plan. You have no stop loss. You have no price target. You're basing all of your trades off of purely emotion and purely off of a gut feeling. Guys, there's no such thing as a fucking gut feeling in trading. You strictly trade off of statistical basis of what your edge shows in the market. Okay. If a trade flips against you and you have no plan, suddenly you're down $100 and then you're down $200 and you have that hope. You have that hope in your head. Oh, it'll bounce. It'll bounce. If I like, because you're thinking that if you sell right now, it'll end up bouncing, right? And then it just keeps going down, keeps going down, keeps going down. And then you take it for a massive, massive loss because you're afraid to accept the fate of actually taking that loss. You're afraid of losing. Again, another one, trying to hit home runs. Stop taking lottos. Guys, if you're in a Discord that alerts lotto trades, leave it, bro. Leave it. Leave it. It is the worst habit that I've seen traders do over years of trading. Every single person I've seen in discords that are alerting lotto plays, that is the worst thing you can possibly do because it is building bad habits. Guys, you are not here to take lottery, lottery chances. You're not here to take chances. You're here to treat trading like a job. Treat it like a business. You're not here to catch massive moves like trading FOMC, trading CPI. You're not, tr you're not trying to trade those massive, massive moves, right? All you need is a slice of the pie for you to make money. That's why it's so funny when I see people on my TikTok comments. They're like, bro, you caught like 10 points. Like You didn't catch a big move at all. Guys, you do not need to catch a big move to make money. The way I trade... I have built up my risk parameters in the way I trade for over years of trading. And I found that the best thing that works for me is taking a slice of the pie and backing up. And that's exactly what I do. I come into the market, take advantage of a little intraday move, and I make my money and I run. I don't need to catch the whole move for me to make money. Something to keep in mind. Losing is a part of the game. It is how you take your losses. It's super, super big here, guys. Are you the type of person to take a loss and automatically blame the market and be like, oh, my market makers like stop hunted me. Like the, I, there's nothing I could have done here. Like I just got stopped out. There's nothing I could have done. Or are you the person that takes a loss and keeps it small and you look back and say, okay, what have I done? What could I, what could I have done differently here, right? Did I follow my rules? Did I follow my price target? Did I follow my stop loss? Was I actually trading my edge? What did I see? You know, what did I not see? Maybe I was, maybe I was too tunnel visioned on something. Like maybe I'm, look back at the trade. Maybe you can see something that you didn't see before. Again, stop focusing on mon making money. Start focusing on the process. Trading is a process oriented game, not a profit oriented game. If you come into the market primarily focused on trying to make quick and easy money, you will lose all of the money you have. Trust me, because it has happened to me countless times, and it has happened to plenty of other new traders that come into the market. If you are fearful of losing money, you will lose money. If you're not disciplined enough to follow your rules day in and day out, you will lose money. You cannot be afraid to lose money in the game. You have to realize that losing is a part of the game. 
It's all about risk management, keeping the losses small, and not letting it affect your mental. You have to get to a point with trading where losses do not affect your mental, where you can take a loss and you know it's a part of the game. You know that it's just a statistic in your trading. If you're following good risk management, you're disciplined, you're patient, you're following your edge, that loss should mean nothing to you because it shouldn't even have a dent in your trading. If you're not disciplined or realize this takes your job, oh, oh, realize this takes your job is to survive, guys. Your job is to survive as a new trader. Trade small to gain experience. This takes a lot, a lot of time, guys. Trading is very hard, very hard. I'm going to remind this to you every single day. It is a process. Trading is not easy. It is okay to fail. Get back up. Try again, survive. Again, your job for your first one, two, three years of trading is to survive, gain experience, and learn every single day. Your first one, two, three years of trading, think of it as you're an unpaid intern learning from the, from, from the people around you, from the experiences you're gaining day in and day out. Again, don't focus on making money. The money will come. The money will come. The more, the less you are focused on money, the more it'll follow you. Trust me. All right, let's get into the introduction to risk management. Going over stop losses and price targets, risk to reward, patience, position sizing, discipline, and only trading your edge. These are the rules that you need to be watching for your risk management. This is what your risk management needs to be made up of is, is every single one of these. Number one, your stop loss should differ for every trade you take. This is big. A lot of people that come to me are like, Justin, what percent is your stop loss? Because I, a lot, when, when I was first taught, I was taught that your stop loss needs to be like, oh, 15% stop loss every time. But what I found myself is I would end up getting stopped out at 15% or 10%, whatever that was. And depending on the trade, I would get stopped out and then it automatically move in my favor, right? So I'd get stopped out, it'd move in my favor, but because that means the trade was never invalid for my stop. You should be basing your stop loss off of an invalidation of your trade, which means either it's breaking above a recent high or it's breaking below a recent low, some type of invalidation. You should not be basing your stop losses off of a percent. Now, that's not saying that your stop losses should not be consistent. It should absolutely be consistent, but it does not need to be the exact same. Now, your entry should be based off of your stop loss, which means before you even enter a trade, you need to be knowing exactly where your stop loss is going to be and exactly where your price target is going to be. Your risk to reward needs to be at least one to three. That means if I take two losses and my next win and my next trade is a win, I'm still making money. That means your risk to reward, this is what's going to keep you alive. Every time that you take a trade, you need to be looking at your risk to reward that you're taking. How much am I risking to, how, to make a certain amount, right? How much am I actually risking? So let's look at some examples here. This was a beautiful trade on ES the other day. I didn't catch this one. I ended up catching the short, but looking back, this was beautiful. This is what we're looking at right here. Broke below sell side liquidity right here into this five-minute fair value gap. Beautiful long entry here. Let's say I long right when we break below this low. Now, ex this is what you, most new traders are like, but wouldn't you sell here? Like, wouldn't you? This is a breakout, right? Guys, you need to stop playing breakouts. If you're a breakout trader, a retail trader trading off of, you know, that is the worst way to trade. We have to start switching our mentality to a liquidity market maker, smart money mindset understanding where liquidity rests, how liquidity works, how institutions are going to play off of retail stops. That's why when you ever find yourself, you know, trading breakouts when you first start trading, what happens is you automatically get stopped out just for the play, right? To go back in your favor, right? You ever find yourself like let's say you're in a long position, it comes down a little bit, you get stopped out and then it just goes right in your favor. That's because institutions know exactly where you're going to put a stop loss. Because every retail trader is studying the exact same books, the same YouTube videos, the same concepts, the same webinars, every single thing. They know where a retail is going to put their stop loss, right? So they're going to use that to advantage to then use retail as liquidity. First thing we're looking at here, right? 
let's say we go long in this five minute fair value gap. My stop loss is right below this five minute zone. So I'm risking one to make eight. That is a one to eight risk reward trade. That is phenomenal. You should be trading at least one to three, minimum one to two. But at most of the time, at least one to three, maybe minimum one to two. But you should not be taking one to one trades. You should not be taking one to one trades. That is how you will lose money because that means your losses are going to be big compared to your wins, right? You're going to be winning just for that next loss to wipe out that, that win. With here, right, our first partial would be this buy side liquidity up here, one to eight. And then our second partial would be another buy side liquidity, which extends to the left, which would be a one to 11 trade. That is a beautiful, beautiful trade, guys. These are the trades you want to take where you're risking a super small amount to make a large amount. That's where being able to take losses comes into the play. Being able to take losses and know that it does not affect whatsoever. I can take four losses in a row. I could take four losses in a row, have one of these trades and be up double, double of what that loss was. That's why you need to focus on risk to reward. Let's take a look at another one. Now, this trade we actually took. This trade I posted, we took this on the live session. This was a couple days ago. I think this was Friday. I'm not sure, actually. This was on a one-minute chart. Buy side liquidity got swept up here. We had a nice push to the downside, and I saw this one-minute fear value gap formed. We went into a short position on the retest of this one-minute fear value gap. I set my stop loss at the highs of the buy side that was swept, and my price target, my first price target was right here, which was the sell side liquidity. Look at this trade. This is a 1 to 3.5 trade here, so almost a 1 to 4 trade. That means I'm risking 1 to make 4. That means if I take a loss and then another loss and then another loss, and then I take a win after that, I'm still making money, right? That's why win percentage does not matter, in my opinion, depending on your risk parameters, right? Your risk parameters are going to be much more important than your win percentage. Because I'm going to say it again. I know traders that have an 80% win rate that are not profitable. And I know traders that have a 40% win rate and are profitable. That's because that 40% win rate trader has significantly larger winners than they do losers. That is a huge, huge thing that you need to know. Second price target down here, one to five. That means I'm risking one to make five. This is how you need to be starting to look at the way you trade. Before you even enter a trade, you need to be knowing where your price target is, where your stop loss is, where do you want to enter? Now, let's look at this exact same trade, right? This exact same trade here. And we're going to talk about basing your entries off of your stop loss, right? So now let's say I didn't get the best entry. Let's say I wanted to enter in this one minute for value gap here, but I missed my entry. So I end up taking it right here, halfway down this candle. I end up getting a very late entry, still with the same price target, which is this lower right here. Now, instead of this trade being one to four, this is now a one to one trade which means I'm risking, let's say $100 to make $100. That is not good odds whatsoever. That's 50-50. That is awful. That is not something that a profitable trader should be doing. This is a very, very bad trade to take. Even if you do win, right? You need to be able to recognize that it is a bad habit and a bad trade. Guys, if I take a win, I will tell you if it's a good trade or a bad trade or not. I will tell you if it's a good, bad trade. I would rather take a small loss knowing that I followed all of my rules than I would take taking a small win and I broke all of my rules. And the reasoning is, is because when I take that small loss following all of my rules, I'm uh, subconsciously building good habits over time. I'm starting to build the discipline of following my plan. I'm building something that's going to actually benefit me in the future because I'm actually following my rules. I'm following proper risk management. This is something that's going to benefit me. Position sizing. The biggest thing, guys, you should not be losing more than 10% of your account in a single day. Now, if you have a $1,000 account, your max loss for the day should be $50 to $100. 
If you have a $2,000 account, your max loss for the day should be 100 to 200. 5K account, 250 to 500. 10K account, 500 to 1,000. If you end up hitting your max loss, you need to cut the day. End it there. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be 10% down on your account. And you're going to automatically be starting to think of wanting to revenge trade. You're going to want to revenge trade. And you're going to dig your hole so deep until that account is blown up. Trust me, I have done it before. I had When I first started trading, I had no risk, I had no risk management, no discipline. I'd be down on the day and I'd be like, oh, I'm not trading well. Like I, I keep losing. But instead of having the discipline to you know, step away and think, you know, tomorrow's another day. This is just one day in my journey. It doesn't mean anything. I decided to, you know, break my rules, go against everything that I know is the right way to trade. And I still just keep trading. And what happens is I take another loss and then another loss. And I keep over leveraging too, because I double my size because I want to make it back. And then I triple my size. And the next thing you know, my account's blown because I'm not following any sort of risk management and I'm not following my rules whatsoever. Your max drawdown needs to be no more than 10% of your account in a single day. No more. Now, creating a trading plan. This is the biggest thing. Guys, if you get anything out of this webinar, I want every single one of you to implement this into your trading. Because if you do not do this, you there is no way to be profitable if you are not following a consistent trading plan. Number one, if there is no setup, there is no trade. And I preach this every single day when I live trade, guys. All the VIP members can attest to this. If there is no setup, I will not take a trade. I will sit there and explain you know, what the market's doing. We watch. You know, We want to see what's going on. But if there's no setup, there is no reason for me to take a trade. Why would I ever take my time to potentially invest my money into an opportunity that might work out for me, right? I know what works for me. So why would I trade anything other than what works for me, right? So if there's no setup, no trade. Now, first step into your trading plan is finding where you want to enter. Do you see a fair value gap formed? Do you see as an order block formed? What is your edge? Where do you normally play off of? Once that key is formed, then you can start looking into how you want to take the trade. So number one, you know where you want to enter. You have it planned out. Next thing, where are you going to put your stop loss? Is it going to be the reason high, the reason low? Um, it's going to be different for every single trade you take. And then the next thing you want to know is your price target. These are the three things that you need to have before taking the buy button or before pressing the sell button. Before you even enter into a position, you need to know where you're going to enter, where your stop loss is going to be, and where your price target is going to be. And you have to stick to that plan. You have to stick to it, right? You should not be doing anything, anything, unless your price target or your stop loss is hit. What happens in between is purely noise, purely, purely noise. And make sure your risk reward is valid. Make sure it's at least one to three, one to two minimum. But one to three and above is where you really want to be aiming for. Let's take an ex take in a pure example right here. Pure price action. This was from today. Now let's look at this one chart at a time, right? So let's go over the trading plan. Number three, if we were, let's go, let's, let's start from number, the, the first thing, right? Right now, we're waiting for our setup, right? Again, no setup, no trade. Right now, there's really nothing, right? I want to see some type of fair value gap formed. What I'm noticing, though, is bullish structure start to form, right? We see that sell side liquidity has now been taken down here. And it looks like we want to come up to this level and maybe break buy side liquidity. You can see we're starting to form new highs now. Okay. Now we got some action formed. There's now a fair value gap formed here. So now I'm looking to take a long position here. So I know where I want to enter now. I know where I want to enter. I want to enter in this fair value gap. Okay. Comes back down. I enter into the fair value gap with my first price target at buy side liquidity. I set my stop loss at the previous low of the wick, which is right here. Now, everything's lining up here. We knew where our entry was going to be. We know where our price target is going to be. We know where our stop loss is. And we have proper RR ratio. This is a one to three trade. 
This is a beautiful trade here. One to three. That's what we aim. That's what we like to see. That's only for our first price target too. Our next price target up here in this order block, this is a one to seven or one to eight trade, right? These are the things that you want to be taking note of and want to be focusing on when you're trading. What is your risk to reward ratio when trading? This is how you're going to be actually profitable. If you find yourself taking big losses, small wins, focus on the risk to reward of your trades. Let's talk a little bit about psychology and some stuff that has helped me. Number one, if you struggle with trading and you keep are, you, are the type of person that always looks at your PL when trading, change the PL to a tick basis. That means instead of seeing, you know, your PL fluctuate based on price, like up hundred dollars, down hundred dollars, it'll show you the tick range of whatever you're trading. So let's say I go long on ES. Instead of showing that I'm up $150 on five contracts, it shows that I'm up 0.5 ticks. Psychologically, you right, instead of seeing that dollar amount, you associate the dollar amount way more than you do associate with the tick basis. Now, seeing this dollar amount is going to hit you with a bunch of emotions, right? You're going to be starting to think, oh, that's where I'm down a lot. Oh, I'm up a lot. Do I take it? I'm down a lot. Because you're so familiar with money in the sense of money. So when you visualize it right in front of you, especially when you're in a trade, it's going to affect your emotion. You might get anxiety from, from seeing this. Everybody's going to be different, but you'll get to a time and a point through years of experience where you will not be affected by this anymore. But I recommend changing it to a tick basis. So instead of being up $100, it'll show you know you're up five ticks or down two ticks or up you know 11 ticks, whatever it is, right? Number two, candlestick colors. And if anybody asks me why I use black and white candlestick colors, it's because red and green are very emotional colors. When people see a lot of green on their chart or a lot of red on their chart, it makes them form biases. And I found that myself included, I would end up forming biases because of the amount of color that I was seeing on my screen. Now, it sounds very, it, it, it sounds very funny. It does. It doesn't sound like it could be a real thing. But again, we have to take into account even the little things that could potentially be affecting us, right? So all of my candlesticks that I trade off of are purely black and white. Now, successful traders treat losses as an opportunity to learn and improve their trading. The more you trade, the biggest thing that you'll find out about yourself is trading is all about mindset. How are you looking at your losses? How are you looking at your wins? Are you trying to constantly improve? Are you blaming it on the market? Guys, the biggest thing is trading is you versus you. It is not you versus the market. That is the biggest thing that always gets misinterpreted with new traders. You are not fighting against the market. You're fighting against yourself. Being able to follow your own rules, follow your discipline, be patient enough to wait for your setups, right? Every time you take a loss, are you using it as a learning opportunity or are you blaming it on something else and just moving on from it? And are you looking at your good, your winning trades to see if you still did something wrong, right? Because there's times where I've taken winning trades, but I'm like, oh, that was a terrible, terrible trade because I was risking, let's say a lot and I made a little, right? That was an awful trade. Let's say I'm risking $1,000 to make like $400. That's an awful trade, awful trade. Even if I made $400 on the trade terrible trade that you need to be able to recognize, journal it, and learn from it. Don't revenge trade. It throws your trading discipline out the window, and it shifts your focus from trading process to trying to make enough money to recover your losses. Guys, revenge trading is a lose-lose situation. There's no reason for you to revenge trade. And the reason it's lose-lose is it's because, number one, if you lose a revenge trade, you increase your losses even more uh, with a trade that you had barely planned for, right? So you're now even losing more money, not even you know trading based off of your edge. And if you win from overtrading, you're going to believe that trading works off of gut feeling and emotion. And something I always preach in my, in my lives is focus on building good habits. It does not matter if you're winning. Believe that you're trading off of gut feeling and emotion. It will not work. It'll create bad habits and it'll end up creating more losses to come in the future because you're expecting something to happen.
You cannot expect something to happen, right? Focus on building good habits. Do not focus on the money because sometimes making money is building bad habits and sometimes losing money is building good habits. That's why starting with low capital so you can learn from your experience is what's very important. Focus on the process and the money will come. Accept responsibility for your own decisions. Change your trading mindset. Change the way that you look at the market. Again, like we said before, trading is you versus yourself. Don't cheat yourself when making mistakes. If you suffer a large loss, own it. Do not brush it aside or blame the markets for it. This was another thing that caused me to take a long time for me to be profitable is because I would take a loss and I wouldn't own it. I'd have a big ego. I'd be like, eh, it's whatever. You know, I'll get a new one because I, I wouldn't want to learn from a mistake. I didn't want to accept that I was bad at trading. I used to be awful. I couldn't make a single winning trade. And when I did, when I'd be like, oh, let's fucking go, you know, I'm the shit, right? The, how, a lot, how a lot of new traders are, right? But you get to a point where you realize that's not the right way to do it. If you suffer a loss, own it. Do not brush it aside or blame the markets for it. Realize what your mistakes are, learn from it, continue to grow. After big loss, size down and step away. One of the biggest things that can result in big losses is when you do not have a clear mind. Not having a clear mind can cause you to skip trades, panic out of trades, or be overly aggressive. Take a step back and trade in a demo account for a few days to build back your confidence. Guys, throughout my whole trading career, there's been times where I've been in a slump, right? And every trader goes through this where they just can't win, or it's one week where they just feel like everything's against them. It's best to take a week off, a day off, and just start paper trading again. Go back to a demo account. Build back your confidence, right? That's the biggest thing is build up your confidence again, right? If you're scared to get into a trade because you know, you've been losing a lot recently, you're going to expect that you're going to lose, and that's going to affect the way you trade. Take a step back, reposition yourself, and start to slowly build your confidence back up, and then you can use your normal position size, right? Lower your position size. If not, go to a demo account, paper trade a little bit. Start building your confidence back up, and then go back to what you normally trade. Let go of the outcome and embrace the process. Guys, trading is a continuous process of learning. Guys, I'm, pro I'm a profitable trader, and I am still learning every single day that I wake up and I trade with my team. Because I'm learning from you guys as well. The questions you ask me, right? It gives me another view of what I normally see on a day-to-day -day a, a day -day basis, right? I get another another look into something and it makes me rethink sort of, uh, a lot of things. So I'm learning every single day. Every day I wake up and trade. And as a trader, you have to be constantly learning, constantly adapting. It's the biggest thing. Most of the times in trading, like real life, Biggest thing, guys, you will learn more from your mistakes than from your victories. It is so, so true. Use your losses as a learning opportunity. Think of it as it's just a part of the process. You will learn way, from, way more from your mistakes than you do your victories. Put your focus out of making money and into enjoying the trading process. It will keep you on the right track and more likely to end up in profit, guys. Don't focus on the money. Enjoy the process. Enjoy. Enjoy it. Enjoy learning. Right? I fell in love with trading. I would wake up every single day, day ex super excited to, you know, watch the charts, watch the market. You know, on the weekends, I was just bored. I was bored on the weekends because I had nothing. I wanted to just, I wanted market to open, right? Fall in love with learning. Fall in love with growing. Don't fall in love with making money. The money will come if you're focused on the process. Okay, now we can get into some questions, guys. <laughs> now we can get into some questions. I know, I know you guys have been patient. <clears throat> Could you give a rundown on Trade of Eight? Um, I have a whole broker video in the Discord. Um, it's I, it actually. It only is access to VIP members right now. I might change that, but we have a whole broker set up for trade of it in the Discord. How do you make candles black and white? Uh, it's different for every trading platform. 
Um, I just recently switched to trading view. You can do it in the settings. So I'm guessing your size on trades are almost the same every time. Yes, very similar. Most of the time I don't trade. I trade three to five contracts on ES and I trade three max on NQ. So I trade one to three NQ, three to five on ES. So I know that there is times frames for trading days. Are these specific? Um, are you talking about like when the markets open? So the markets are open at 6.30 PST. So 6.30 AM PST. It'll be different for every time zone. But 6.30 AM PST and it'll close at 1 PM PST. I'd love to see how you chart out the full trade and plan it, aka how to spot areas of liquidity, etc. I do it. I do it every single day live for our VAP members, guys. Every single day, I chart and explain what I'm doing live in front of your face. You're free to ask questions. Free to ask why I'm drawing things. That's the biggest thing about why I do live trading, guys. Is I want you guys to see live that being able to understand and recognize certain things in front of your face and how to use it to your advantage. Is your, is your strategy free for everyone to learn? Um, we currently have a whole futures A to Z course that is coming. If you guys scroll up in the announcements, there's a whole thing that we, me and Cheyenne are working on right now. Uh, it's going to be available for VIP members uh, mid to late March. We are working very hard to uh, finish it. I do not want to rush it. I want to make sure I include everything that I want to talk about. Uh, we'll be going over, you know, what are futures, how do futures work, the best futures brokers, basics of technical analysis, uh, supply and demand, basic indicators, reading price action, understanding liquidity, risk management basics, uh, planning and executing trades, smart money concepts, order flow, how to read order flow, volume profile, how to read NQ and ES, understanding purge of liquidity, discipline and patience, psychology, and there's so much more, guys. We have We have so much planned for this. You have no idea. When the candle hits your stop loss, do you wait until the candle close or when it hits? Uh, it depends on the trade. Most of the time, it should just be when it hits, though. But sometimes I like to wait. What's the best plan to do if you are very close to burning a challenge? Lower your size. Lower your size. Wait, you switch to trading view. Do you use that meta five to make the executions? No. I, I use TradingView for my charts. I execute using Tradeovate and NinjaTrader still. Is there no audio? I can't hear anything. My first time on Zoom. Uh, I'm not sure. I am not sure, brother. Should be able to hear me. Explain why you trade futures instead of options. Okay. So we'll be talking about more of this in the future. But number one, there is many, many pros to trading futures. Number one, the biggest thing in my opinion versus options is I, I used to trade options for two years. I traded options for two years before I went to futures. The reason why I hated options is number one, you need more capital to trade, right? You need more capital to be able to buy the contracts, being able to scale in and out of the positions. With futures, you can trade micro contracts, which are very cheap. You can buy a lot of them. You can scale in and out of positions. With options, you have Greeks, right? You have Delta, you have Theta, Vega, Gamma, every sort of thing that affects price. With futures, there's no Theta decay. There's no time decay. Your contract that you're trading is primarily moving based off of price action. So it is very easier to manage your risk. Not you know, There's no zero DTEs. There's nothing that's going to affect price. It is purely just price action. And it makes it so you can manage your risk a lot heavier. There's also significant tax benefits for futures. You are taxed way less with futures than you are options. And there's some more as well. Finding that a lot of times when it sweeps uh, liquidity, has a break of structure, and forms for value gap, the next candle never really touches it and just shoots. Do you only enter if it enters the fair value gap? Yes, I do. But again, look at multiple time frames. Maybe there's a maybe you're looking at only one specific time frame to look at a fair value gap. Look at the five minute, look at the one minute, look at the 15 minute. Maybe there's a fair value gap that is formed on another time frame that we're finding support with. Stream, yeah, guys, via so I, I live stream every single morning uh, morning, Monday through Friday for all of our VIP members. Is there a specific candle pattern or candle that is your go-to trade? No, I do not trade retail candle patterns. I think they're a waste. 
What funding program do you recommend? Uh, it's a tough one. I think Apex is really good just because it's super cheap, but at the same time, Apex is bad because uh, if you don't have proper risk management and you don't know how to pass an evaluation, you're not going to pass it. But it is very, it's a cheap option that will give you um, many tries if you end up failing it. And then I also like Tick Tick too. Can you paper trade on Trade of It? Yes, without any funds in live account or can it? Yes, you can paper trade on on oh, Trade of It, something called the simulation account. What is the futures market hours? For example, like MNQ, I heard someone say it is 24 seven. Yep. I mean, I, I guess it is 24 five, I guess. It is, it's, so there's London session, which opens like at like 1 a.m. for me or midnight. I, I, don't, I don't really remember, but I normally just trade regular, I trade regular market hours because that is when the most volume is going to be in the market. So I take advantage of that. Do you use footprint at all? I use Bookmap. So I use Bookmap for order flow. And I also use volume profile. What milestones should one hit to consider scaling positions going from one to two to three MES, et cetera, ultimately to one. So the milestones I would recommend is nothing specific, right? What I would do instead is if you're being consistent and profitable trading one EM at one MES for like two weeks, three weeks, then that, that fourth week, maybe, maybe try two, right? And then see how that week goes with two. And then if you're still consistent, then up it a little, a little bit, right? Because your trading is going to be a little bit different when you start upping your position size because your, your emotions are going to take over, right? You're not used to trading that much size. So it's going to be, you're going to be a little bit emotional. So slowly start to scale up over time. It doesn't need to be a specific number your account gets to, you know, it just needs to be based off of consistency. If you're consistent trading one, you can up it a little bit over time. Why futures rather than Forex? Uh, I just, I never got into Forex. I don't like trading Forex. I mean, I, I can't, I can't really say I don't like trading Forex. I just have always traded the markets. And so I got into futures and I like, and I, I love, I love futures. Do you back test a lot? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I back test not a lot. I would say most of my back testing goes back to after I make a trade, I will back test that trade understand what I could have done differently, understand what I did right, what I did wrong. I journal it, but I don't necessarily go into the charts and try to find setups in past sessions. I think the best way to learn is looking at for something forming right in front of you. Can you explain how you incorporate bookmap into your intraday trading? Yeah. So I use bookmap as a form of order flow. It's easier to understand where liquidity is resting because I can see a heat map of orders. I can understand uh, where buyers and sellers are resting at. I can see who's more strong, buyers or sellers, based off the market, where most volume is going into, what levels are most likely to bounce, what levels are most likely, most likely to break through, depending on how many orders are there. Again, we have a whole book map video coming uh, in the A to Z futures program that is going to be coming out soon. So there's going to be a whole book map section. Can you paper trade on trade of eight without any fun? Yes. What funding program do you recommend? Or did that, can you connect Robinhood to TradingView? No, I, no idea. I'd recommend not using Robinhood. Does Apex allow you to trade on Tradeovate or only Ninja Trader? Only Ninja Trader. How do you see your risk reward on Tradeovate? Just do the math, guys. Do the math. It's something that you should be able to visually see. Something you should be able to visually see. If you, you know, let's say I'm on a trip. Like, we'll literally go back to this, right? Let me let me go back uh, on the this, right? You should be able to visually see it, right? If I enter right here, even without putting like this green or red thing, if I enter right here and my stop loss is right here, my price circuit's right here, you can visually notice that this win is going to be significantly bigger than this loss, right? Or look at the price. Look at your entry price. Let's say I enter in at 4108 and my stop loss is 4106. My price target is 4115, uh, right? So do the math. 4108, 4115. Let's say I'm I'm risking two points to make seven points, right? That's how you can do it. Let's say you pass your eval on Apex is the only money you lose the monthly payment. Wait, let's say you pass your eval on Apex is the only money you lose the monthly payment plus any profit loss. Yes, so the only thing you lose is your monthly payment, but you also have to pay an additional fee to activate a funded account. Once you pass it, you still have to pay the, the fee to activate the funded account. No, if you pay for the evaluation and it fails, you do not owe anything other than that that money that you paid at the beginning. Do you watch the tape when you're trading? Yes. Can you connect Robinhood to TradingView? Don't connect Robinhood to TradingView. 
the two hundred dollar account, you got to nine hundred. How many contracts did you buy usually? Then uh, I traded around four MES, I think, so three to four MES. But again, that is very, very uh, heavy risk, right? But I know how to manage that risk. I'm very, very um, particular with my entries, and I'm very. Um, why, why am I forgetting the word? Uh, I don't let the market, if the market does not give me the specific trade I want, I will not FOMO into it. I have, I wait for very, very prime A plus setups that I know will work for me with the small account. So then I can use more size to grow the account. I think when you're trading with a, an account like $200 or hundred dollars, that is very small. You have to be, you have to have a little bit more risk put on to get that account to a higher level where then you can manage with, uh, with more contracts, you can have more wiggle room to work with. Also, that account just hit $1,000 today as well. Uh, do you always go with the trend? No. Depends. It depends with the trade. If I see a break of structure, I might go against it. What time of what time frame is the most ideal to play fair value gap? Uh, my favorite, again, I use every time frame. But when I'm scalping, I like to trade one minute, five minute, and 15 minute. If I'm scalping primarily off of those. After you get access to 50K, do you owe any after you go under 50K? No. If you go, if you hit your liquidation level, then the account gets liquidated and you lose the account. If you get the, if you hit a funded account, you pay the activation fee and you still hit that liquidation level, you will lose the account, but you won't have to pay anything else, but you'll lose it. Yeah, of course. How have you developed as a trader in the past three months? Did you learn anything new? That's a really good question. Um, I feel like I've developed a significant amount actually in the last three months. Um, I think, uh, and I, you know, it's it's kind of funny. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. I think starting this whole community has made me a way better trader. And it's not that I was a bad trader before. But what this community has now done for me is it has forced me to be my best self because I want to preach the best possible things that you can do for trading. And it has forced me to now project that best things onto you guys, which now forces me to be the best version of myself as a trader, right? So I have another level of people that you know rely on me for education, for guidance, and that, that forces me to now act as the best version of myself with my trading. So it's kind of added an, an extra layer of discipline onto my trading. Do you set FIB on the recent high, recent lower liquidity points? Yes, I do, depending on retracements. Have a good night, brother. Thank you for stopping by, Ant. Is it $80 a month to keep a past funded account on Apex? Uh, I think so. I'm not sure. Does ICT bless you teaching this? Does ICT bless you teaching this? Uh, I'm confused on the question. Been trading options, but uh, been imp implanting this trading plan and seeing it work. So I'm thinking about going to futures now. I recommend going to futures, man. I really do. I think futures are in a great way to learn. How do you know what size your trades should be? Uh, I don't think that you should be risking more than 15% of your account on one trade. How long did it take you to finally become disciplined and follow your rules? Uh, it wasn't like one moment that it just happened. It happens over a significant amount of time where you slowly start to build up discipline. But I'd say for me to become really disciplined and follow my rules like consistently, I'd say over two years. How did you change your mentality when you would lose trades? You just, it just, again, you get to a point where you lose so much where you realize you're doing the exact, you're making the exact same mistakes, right? Mentality is a very big thing with, with trading. You have to be able to have the correct mentality and the growth mentality when trading. Have you considered managing slash trading accounts for your uh, immediate family, partner, close friends? Um, no, I mean, I've considered it, but I don't think I will. 
I, I was recently offered an opportunity to manage uh, an o- over half a million dollar por- portfolio for this uh, for this guy who reached out to me. He reached out to me and wanted me to manage uh, like this eight hundred thousand dollar account, and I was uh, and I would you know I'd get a percentage of it. But the thing is, is uh, there's a whole new level of emotion that in psycho- psych- uh, psychological aspects that comes comes with managing another person's money, right? So I wouldn't be able to trade my best managing someone else's money. And I don't want to have to deal with that. As a beginner trading MES, how much should you start your account at? Uh, And you can just watch the ES chart and execute MES on the DOM. I'd recommend just, if you're a beginner, just start paper trading. Start a simulation account on Tradeovate. Don't use real money at first. Focus on actually building an edge focus on you know actually learning how to trade and then use money right if you just put money in at the beginning and you have no clue what you're doing you're just going to lose it on that trade that was 1315 that would have been a 101 if you enter late would you average in their trim if you enter on top you shouldn't even be entering you shouldn't even be entering if you if you miss if you miss that entry of 1 to 3 1 to 5 you should not you should let it go there's no reason for you to enter now you should just let it go. It's gone. How much did you lose before you started to win? Uh, I lost around. So I became profitable around my third year of trading. So I'd say like a little bit over two and a half years, I started to become profitable. And I lost around, I want to say, I want to say 12 grand when I first started. And so in the, in the span of two and a half years, I lost around 12 grand. But the thing is, in the next six months that came after that, I ended up making significantly more than 12 grand. (laughs) When looking at fair value gaps, how do you determine which fair value gap was higher priority over another? When looking at a chart, I recognize many fair value gaps, but I have a hard time knowing which ones have more uh, weight. Good question. So what I like to do is I like to, number one, use FIBS, right? Understand if it's in a discount range or a premium range, right? So is it uh, above a 50% retracement or below a 50% retracement? Also start looking at multiple timeframes. If you have like a 30 minute fair value gap and it's pretty big or a one hour fair value gap and it's pretty big, lower timeframes into like a 15 minute chart, right? Is there a fair value gap inside that fair value gap? And then go from a 15 minute to a five minute. Is there a five minute fair value gap inside the 15 minute fair value gap? And then you start to tighten that range. How many times did you change your strategy before you found one one now? That is a really good, really good question. Really, really good question. I think one of my biggest problems that that held me back when I first started trading was I kept changing my strategy. That is something that you know it took me a long time to get over. And again, guys, it is not your strategy that's losing you money. It's you that's losing your money. What I would do was, you know, I'd fi- I'd pick a strategy, you know learn from it. You know, I'd, I'd work on it for like a couple months and then I'd win and then I'd lose and then I'd keep losing. And instead of, and in, instead of, you know, working on it myself, I would have been like, ah, oh, this strategy doesn't work. You know, of course I'm, I don't, I blame it on the strategy and not myself. Right. I, I, I don't blame it on myself, even though it was me that was making those mistakes, but I blamed it on the strategy. So I ended up dropping it all completely, finding something new and having to relearn all over again, you know? So all of that work I put in is now is now gone because I I thought that I was the one that was right, but it was me. I was the problem the whole long. It's you versus yourself. It's not your edge. It's not your strategy. Keep working on it. Now, now it's not that's not to say that there's not strategies that don't work. There are definitely strategies that don't work, but most of the time it's it's continuing to back test, continuing to go day in and day out. Keep testing it and seeing what works and what doesn't work. No, I meant if you got in with good entry, would you scale in contracts or trim your profits? No. Oh, I would not scale in. If I get one entry, I would – that's it. Sometimes I scale in, sometimes. But if most of the time, like on that specific trade, I entered in my full position off of that one test. Out of curiosity, were you profitable trading options? Uh, y- yes, but not as much as futures. Do you ever use an EMA to trade off of? No. I know people that do though, but I personally don't use any indicators on my chart. 
I would love to join once your course is out. Is there a way to be notified when the course is out? Yes, I'll, I'll make an announcement. It's again, it'll probably be out. It still has uh, in the next, I'm guess I'm hoping mid to late March. So in the next month, in, a, in like a month, I'd say, again, there's, we have so much content that we want to cover and I, I don't want to rush it because I want to like make it as valuable as possible. And I want to make sure I don't skip out on anything, but yeah, it should be out mid to late March. What percent do you aim to make a week and do you do like weekly with a withdrawal, but always keeping a minimum trade with? That's a good question. I do not aim to make a percent uh, every week because every week's going to be different. I don't know if the market is going to present me, you know, the right amount of opportunity. Some weeks I take, you know, very few trades. Sometimes, sometimes, some weeks I take a lot of trades, right? So it's going to be different every single week. If I set a standard for myself or I set a goal, it's going to make me force trades that I shouldn't be taking because I want to reach that percent, right? So focus on what the opportunities that are given you. Don't focus on the amount that you're actually trying to make. How do you game plan the night before? I like to draw on my key levels, draw on my fair value gaps, draw in where liquidity is resting, where possible areas that we can go, being able to understand price action, thinking if we're going to have a sell-off, open up. Most of my charting becomes the the morning of because, again, it, a lot of what I trade off of, it's, it depends on what happens in the overnight session. So. <clears throat> guys if if everyone could do a, a big favor for me i want to uh we're gonna end the session here soon but i want to video record for the instagram and for the tiktok to show everybody the the uh the session that we just did and i want you guys to type in the chat if you guys enjoyed learning from the session if we had a good session tonight Yo, did everybody in, enjoy this session, guys? Did we learn something? Did we learn something? Awesome. Love to see you, boys. Love to see you, guys. Awesome. Learning from the best. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Guys, I'm so I'm so glad to hear it, man. I'm so glad. Guys, I... Guys, I, I I I say it I say it many times I say it many times, but like my my reason for for doing this is when I first started trading, uh, I I ha I had like nobody to you know show me in the right direction. I had no men I had no mentor. I had I I had to try, strictly learn off of trial and error. That's all it was. Is just constantly making mistakes, constantly making mistakes. I'd had nobody to tell me, you know, what was right, what was wrong, what was I doing right that was wrong. Yeah, I had to learn that just just through trial and error and a lot of hardships. There's been times where I've wanted to quit, countless, countless times where I've lost everything. You have to get back up. You have to keep learning. The whole reason I want to do this is I want to give you guys that mentor that I didn't have when I first started trading, so I can cut you guys. So you guys don't have to go through the certain things that I had to go through, that you don't have to make the same mistakes I made. And I want to push you guys in the right direction because it took me a long time to figure out what was right and what was wrong. And there was a lot of people too, you know, a lot of fake, fake traders. There is a lot of fake traders, guys, that are out there that will try to promote things that are awful. You know, a lot was in discords that were like 400% options trading plays. They're just trying to promote fast, quick money, and that's not how you. That's not the right way to trade. And I know, guys, I know a lot of you feel that way, being pulled in many directions. I 100% relate to you. I want to offer something that is very special here, and I want to offer something to really push everyone to be successful. I want everybody here to be a self-sufficient trader. From Malaysia, I really enjoy learning. Awesome, brother. Right. Of course, guys. All right, guys. I'm going to end the session here. I hope everybody had an amazing, 
amazing session. I hope everybody learned something from this. I'm going to plan to do more of these in the future, not just for VIP members, but for you know everybody, because I think that there's a lot of valuable information that I want to offer to everybody, and I don't think some of this information should be have to you know pay to pay to get it. I think it just it needs to be you know told, and I want to help you guys out. So, um, to all the people that do want to join VIP, though, I I I I'm, of course like it's not something that I can you know recommend because like it's I benefit from it. But again, the biggest benefit for me is seeing the comments that you guys make. I, I could care less about the money that I make from this. Being able to actually help and being able to, you know, know that somebody doesn't have to go through the shit that I went through because it was fucking downright awful. And it it but it made me the trader who I am today. So I'm hope to see you guys in the live trading sessions if you want to be a part of the tactical traders team. Um, super excited for the future and the amount of education and content that we're creating for you guys. But other than that, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you guys learned something from the session and I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Thank you for stopping by. Keep working hard. Keep working at it. Don't give up. It'll come. Have a great night, guys.